So I was going through some of my stuff and I found the two test barrels from my uh, test barrel forging videos that I tried to blow up. And uh, I, was, I, was got, I got to looking at them. I, I took the breech plugs out and examined them. I haven't cleaned these since I fired them. I was looking and I, they weren't very corroded at all, which surprised me. But uh, now I got to looking at these and I think through my experimental archaeology of forging a barrel from scratch, never having done it before, I think I discovered how rifling came to be. Now, this, this one here was the scalp method where you take a flat bar and you wrap it into a C shape and you weld the seam. And this one here was a spiral wrap method. I took a piece of steel and I coiled it around a mandrel and I removed the mandrel and I welded it together. And uh, we'll start with this one because uh, this is the one it's most evident on. But so I didn't clean these and I didn't I didn't fit these at all. And there's remarkably little corrosion in here. But when I welded this, okay, it didn't come up perfect and straight all the way down. If you go back to the video and watch, when I wrapped it, it kind of corkscrewed a little bit. And you can see oh, the seam in there. Let me get this right. There you go, the seam on the bottom. You see it kind of shoots off to the left a little bit. Okay, uh, I was trying, I, I forged these barrels as terrible as possible because I wanted to, to blow them up. And here's the case in point, this one drilled off center. You see how thin it is right here? Okay, I wanted to see, and I, and I didn't do anything special when I welded these. Um, oh, here, here you, here you can see the, the seam on the outside. See, goes this way. So anyway, I weld these in the worst way possible just to see how much you can get away with and still come out with a functional barrel. And apparently it's quite a lot. But anyway, I got to look at this and I saw that twist. And I got to thinking about the inside there. I didn't drill out the, entire of the entirety of the inside seam. I got to thinking, what if either an apprentice gunsmith... Uh, made a barrel like this didn't drill the seam all the way or it was a gun shop you know they had to make a rush order of barrels and so they put out some substandard quality barrels like this with that seam still in there and corkscrewed and uh or maybe he just you know made a shitty one for a guy he didn't like but uh i'm i'm, I'm betting that that acted like a rifling groove, and that guy come back and said, man, this barrel shoots lights out. You gotta make me another one like that. And then he had to think back, oh, crap, that was that crappy barrel I sold that guy. Or, oh, that was from that batch of barrels that we just rushed out the door. What did we do on those? Let me, hold on, I'm into that gun back, let me see that. I, and, you now this is obviously a weak spot. So, you know, somebody with more talent gun making was like what if instead of trying to forge that in what if we cut it in instead and then he went on to de to develop the rifling bench but let me get come to this uh i think this one here i think this is the predominant way they might have been forged which gives it that lazy twist and looking at the twist in this and the twist in my 1860 uh three springfield it's about a one in 72 it's about the same pitch and this one here, this is a, this is probably a one and three twist on this one. Now this one, like I said, I didn't fit these breech plugs at all. This one's got some some more rust in there, probably for some gas blow by. But let's see if I can. Here you can you can see how much is in there. I didn't completely drill out this either, which shows you. Now, if you remember, go back to that video where I tested these. I was taking a metal rod and a hammer, and I was beating the lead down into here. I was mushrooming that lead 
into all those tight coil coils. So the pressure spike on these, this, especially this one, must have been intense because it had to shear the lead to push it out of those coils. And yes, my drill bit went off center on this one, but it was a test barrel, I didn't care. What can I get away with? You can see the spirals in there. So I'm, I'm pretty confident I have stumbled upon how rifling came to be somebody's ineptitude or mistake turned out to be a great thing and then somebody else or maybe the same guy perfected it the guild that there was a guild system you know everything used to be guild system so the guy that come up with this was part of a guild and he spread the knowledge to those he taught and then they spread the knowledge to those they taught This one's kind of crappy. So again, yep, you can see the outside seam in the barrel coming all the way back to here. And the inside seam doing the same thing. But that one, at least in this, that one groove should be enough to catch the edge of a patch and make that sucker spin. Well, that is my my theory, my hypothesis. I ain't no scientist. I'm just a redneck out in a tin shack. But yeah, I ain't ever heard this. Uh, ain't, I ain't never heard of anything like this before. So if you think it's if you think it's plausible, let me know. If you think I'm a dummy, let me know. Like. I want to learn as much about this as I can because that is quite fascinating.